the uh, the first technique I'm going to show you, the presentation's in two parts, techniques and genres. And the first technique I'm going to show you is the chop. And you make the chop by dropping your bow hair onto the strings angled away from your face like this. So it's a, it's a very percussive sound, it's accompanimental. You can do it um, assimilated into a, a melody um, aside from the notes or you can do it just as a percussive backbeat to another soloist. It's very common in bluegrass and Appalachian styles, but it's used in many other genres. Um, and uh, Daryl Anger and Casey Dreesen are two violinist fiddlers who are famous for using it. Um, I actually have an embarrassingly hard time with it, considering that I'm supposed to be a classical violinist who knows how to use my instrument. I just like, it's really hard to get the, get the technique of it. Um, the second technique I'm gonna show you is blues slides. And slides are actually common in fiddle music too, but you're not supposed to slide both directions in the same same phrase that's frowned upon in classical, but not in blues. Um, so you can slide up to the note, or you can slide down, so like this. Or down. Um, and it, th there's a very trademark slow slide for blues where you go do, do the slide slower but slides are used in almost every genre, fiddle, class, like fiddle genres, classical, um, modern, everything. Uh, the third technique I'm going to show you is, um, if she's got messed up, is um, slide vibrato, which is similar to regular vibrato. This is regular vibrato. But slide vibrato is where instead of rocking your hand, you slide the finger back and forth like this. Uh, it's very common in blues. It's kind of like rubbing the string. That's how I like to think of it. Start slow and then, and then speed it up. Um, and then the last technique I'm gonna show you is wild vibrato, which is similar to slide vibrato, but you do it descending down the neck like this. You can do it with any finger. Uh, this is also common in classical music. Um, I actually did it in my college auditions. They, they, there was some wild vibrato. Or in classical, it's called like a glissando with vibrato. Um, in the concerto I played for my college auditions, so I am intimately familiar with this. Um, and next, we are going to look at genres. I'm going to do some comparisons between six different non-classical genres. Uh, the first two we're going to look at are Irish and Scottish. A lot of people think that they're very similar. I actually thought they were very similar until I looked into it closer. But basically Irish centers around left-handed ornamentation with fingering, so the slide, um, the uh, trills roll. There is a, something called an Irish roll where you go go like up and then down um, and Irish has a lot of slurs both within and across the measures and bowing is often on the string this is on the string bowing as opposed to off the string this is off on, off. Scottish on the other end has lots of off the string bowing um, lots of changes in bow direction not a lot of slurs although some slurs and lots of right hand bowing ornamentation um, so I'm going to play an Irish and a Scottish piece, um, and the Irish tune I'm going to play is called the Kesh, and I'm going to play it twice through, once with no ornaments, and once with lots of ornaments so you can hear the difference. So this is no ornaments. <laughs> super plain just to just the melody of the um just the me melody of the tune nobody would ever perform it that way it's super boring so this is uh this is the tune with some ornamentation added <laughs> So you can hear 
lots of ornamentation in the left hand, lots of fancy slurs and taking notes out, stuff like that. And so this is Canadian on the other hand. Uh, not, not Canadian actually, the name of the piece is Canadian Medley. Um, so I saw the word Canadian and I got distracted and that was wrong of me. But um, the name of the piece is Canadian Medley because it was composed by a Scottish fiddler while he lived in Canada. Um, but this is actually a Scottish piece that it was composed in Canada. <laughs> the string stuff, um, um, very fast, um, right hand ornamentation, and um, while there were some slurs, like the slurs weren't the overriding uh, ornamentation in this piece. So the next comparison we're going to look at is Gypsy Jazz versus Blues. Um, Gypsy Jazz is famous for its swinging rhythm, kind of fast beat. It has short phrases um, and rhythm swings, so it has a fast swing. Whereas blues has a famous 12 bar blues phrase, which is a long phrase in comparison to gypsy jazz. And it has a slow swing. Um, so this is Gypsy Fantastic, which is uh, gypsy jazz. swinging rhythm and short phrases and this is a blues piece called in the cluster Obviously, much slower. Um, there are long phrases. It still swings, but um, it's definitely a slower swing than Gypsy Fantastic had. And you can hear lots of the slides that I demonstrated earlier in the technique section. So the next comparison is between Texas breakdowns and Texas waltzes. Um, the breakdown goes at high speed. It's never in three. It's always in two or four and double stops are infrequent, although they do occur. Um, the Texas waltz goes at a slow speed, it's always in three, you know, the waltz, one, two, three, two, two, three, three, two, three, um, and double stops are very frequent. Um, and the Mexican waltz uh, is very similar to the Texas waltz because these waltzes have been around before there was a border there, so they're, they're separate now in terms of compositions and titles, but it's still like very much the same same style. Um, so I 
I'm now going to play a Texas breakdown called College Hornpipe. <laughs> which is, uh, it's actually a Mexican waltz, but as I said earlier, they're very similar and it exemplifies all of the same um, techniques of the Texas waltz. <laughs> Texas breakdown was much faster than the waltz. Um, I mean, I imagine even if you don't know much about time signatures, you could definitely hear that was in three, like the heavy one, two, three, two, two, three of the beats. Um, and the double stop, for anyone who doesn't know, it's playing two strings at the same time, like as a double stop. That's a regular note. So you can hear that this piece had a lot more double stops. I don't know. Also, if anybody's wondering, I did some left hand pizzicato in this. Um, which is when you pluck the string with the left hand while you're playing, like... It's a lot of fun. It's one of my favorite techniques. Uh, so anyway, that is all. Thank you very much. Um, and yeah.